Hello everyone, and welcome to the fifth episode in our series, and today we're going to be talking about the fighter. Some key notes before we jump in. The fighter in the Unearthed Arcana, they did a lot of good revamping and expanding upon its core original abilities from 2014. I will give it credit where that is, uh, I'll give it credit where credit is due. They did a good job with that. However, I still think that compared to a lot of the other classes uh, in terms of spellcasters and in also marshals throughout the Unearthed Arcana, you'll see a lot of kind of expanded uh, repertoires and other martial classes. I think the fighter was still kind of behind, I think, in just the Unearthed Arcana. I think that it was still kind of lackluster in that, uh, in the fact that it just still felt like it's very just, you know, you take your attack axe and you swing a sword and that's about it in terms of what you can do. So... I've always been a firm believer in this. I've actually homebrewed this into my fighters for a very long time. But one of the key changes that I've made is I've made maneuvers baseline embedded into the class of the fighter. And as we go through, as we look at the owner Arcana, as we look at 2014 and we compare it to my version, I'll give all the explanations as to why. But let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right. So the fighter, like I said, going into it, uh, a lot of good changes i just expanded upon those changes and i think now we have a really good finished product let's go ahead and get into this a table took it from the unearthed arcana class features will not really be the same however you'll see your second wins your weapon masteries your proficiencies all the good you know housekeeping stuff that you definitely will need part of any good pdf and so it's embedded there as well and then just so you're all aware the uh the big screen you see there is going to be my version of the fighter the kind of smaller one is going to be the uh unearthed arcana pdf and then of course you have the 2014 player's handbook in written book format so i guess typed but regardless all right let's go ahead and jump into this so hit points uh, of course unchanged nothing much to do there but i will say the um proficiencies are a little bit adjusted i added a couple more uh to the skills here and then biggest thing is for the, the tools one choice of artisans tools i added to the fighter class because i just feel like when you're a fighter and you're a martial based character i feel like you'd have some sort of uh some sort of um understanding of, a, of an artisan's tool you know it from that list and so i kind of gave that to the class just to kind of expand upon the the fighter's ability for rp and to assist the party in various ways because i feel like in the 2014 version of the fighter it just feels like all you do in that class is you just you're ready for combat you're doing whatever it is in combat like you like, that's where you kind of excel and outside of that uh you're not so much i feel like the fighter kind of kind of loses a lot of its kind of fun in terms of just rp because there's not a whole lot of class features that you know kind of pick you up and lift you up so just bare bones in the you know kind of the proficiencies list now you do get artisan's tools to kind of help bridge that gap a bit from the combat to the rp world starting equipment is going to be um the one that they had listed in the unearthed arcana to kind of keep it simple let's go ahead and jump in though i'm really excited to kind of share all the changes here so class features level one fighting style you've honed your martial prowess and gain a fighting style feat of your choice those feats have this feature as a prerequisite whenever you gain a fire level you can replace the feat you chose the different fighting style so essentially just fighting style from the 2014 version they have some different kind of verbiage here but it's essentially the same thing second wind you have a limited well of physical and mental stamina that you can draw on as a bonus action you can use it to regain hit points equal to 1d10 plus your fighter level you can use this feature twice you gain one expended use when you finish a long rest excuse me when you finish a short rest and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest when you reach certain fighter levels you gain more uses of this feature as shown in the second wind column of the fighter table this is essentially the exact same thing as the honor arcana however the second wind in the 2014 version was only a single use which is kind of wild to me thinking about it looking back it's like all you get is a single use of 1d10 plus your fire level at any field of play whether you're level one or you're level 12 or you're level 18 all you'd be able to do is heal only 1d10 plus your fighter level um which it's still a good ability, but it's just it, in terms of it being actually, you know, beneficial, uh, it's a power kind of diminishes over time. So I'm really glad that, um, you know, they switched this. So now you get two uses a second win. And as you progress through the class, you actually will get a total of four towards the end. So I think it's awesome. Um, 
I will say here, I totally meant to do this, um, but I'm actually going to go ahead and on this video, uh, I'm going to actually adjust this because I think that this is kind of important. Uh, and I liked it. I like the idea that that your constitution plays a role in certain things in terms of like regaining hit points for a feature like second win. And I actually meant to add constitution modifier to this um, before the video, but I guess I forgot. And so I'm just going to add it in, kind of throw it in there. Cause I like the fact that like it, this, you know, this is also benefiting from just your, your overall stamina and kind of um, hardiness as a, as a character as well. And so I did want to add that. So now it's 1d10 plus your constitution modifier plus your fighter level. That way it's a little bit more of a bump, not by anything super crazy, obviously one to five, depending on your stat lineup, but at least something it's a little bit more. And so that makes it feel a little bit better too. When say you rolled like a one or a two on the d10, it kind of gives you, gets you up there a bit. So, all right, continuing on weapon masteries. Your training with weapons allows you to use the mastery property of three kinds of weapons of your choice with which you have proficiency in. Whenever you finish a long rest, you can practice weapon drills and change one of those weapon choices. When you reach certain fighter levels, you gain the ability to use the mastery properties of more kinds of weapons as shown in the weapon mastery column of the fighter table. So the, the weapon masteries, um, if you're unfamiliar, uh, are now kind of these cool features that you can do with certain weapons depending on kind of what the weapon is it's basically like a weapon feature that you can kind of um you can kind of tap into so slow is a good example so basically you can reduce the movement speed of a creature by 10 if you hit them with this weapon or whatever it is right so i will say weapon masteries right you know just from early on in the fighter really allows the fire to be more of just than like a um, I hit and then I get hit and I hit this runescape combat I like to refer to it as it allows you to kind of do more just as a martial class in general because you can kind of tap into these uh these cool abilities that the weapons have also and you also get more than any other class most of the classes what you'll get uh two to start out with you get three for for the fighter so you get a little bit more in terms of versatility with that so that's super cool I like the weapon masteries I think it makes just any martial based combat a lot more flavorful and a lot more fun and it makes combat more dynamic so that's always a good thing as well action surge you can push yourself beyond your normal limits for a moment on your turn you can take one additional action except the magic action once you use this feature you must finish a short rest or long rest before you can use it again a big change from the 2014 version is that uh, it specifies you cannot use uh, basically a, a spell or a magic action uh, twice, you know, using the action surge uh, ability on your turn. Uh, that's a change in the Unearthed Arcana that uh, that they made, and I think that's fair. I think that it does help kind of prevent a lot of that um, heavy, that heavy kind of multi-class into into fighter to get the action surge, and then make a spellcaster extremely just powerful. I like that it kind of nullifies that just a bit, but still super beneficial for a fighter because you know very infrequently will they be doing magic action. So. Tactical mining is an awesome change that the Unearthed Arcana introduced to the fighter. You have a mind for tactics and getting the upper hand on and off the battlefield. When you fail an ability check, you expend, you can expend a use of your second win to push yourself towards success. Rather than regaining hit points, you roll a d10 and add the number rolled to the ability check, potentially turning it into a success. If the check still fails, this use of second wind isn't expended. Tactical mind, I love this so much. Going back to what I was saying at the beginning of the video. This allows the fighter to feel a lot more versatile outside of combat. It allows them to be able to push themselves a bit and kind of be, uh, and kind of be like that clutch character, like that the, that the rogue. I feel like so, um, you know, so frequently has. It allows them to be like, hey, I really need to pass this thing. Let me do it. Let me. I can add my second wind. I can use tactical mind. I can really push this. You know, push my character beyond. Uh, maybe it's normal just like proficiencies in a certain task and make something happen. I love that. It makes it so that the range of role playing slash skill check kind of realm of the class is so much more broad and, and it makes it super cool. I also love the fact that it, if you fail the check still, you get it. It does not expend the use of the second wind. That makes it so that the fighter can kind of you know, get more involved without feeling like it's spending one of its few resources to do so. It basically, I wouldn't say it guarantees a success, but it guarantees that a success will happen if this resource is expended, which I absolutely love. Such a good change. And yeah, just amazing. Now, level two, combat superiority. 
this is what I was kind of mentioning at the beginning of the video. I have always believed that the maneuvers. I love the I love the Battlemaster subclass real quick. Well, Battlemaster subclass I feel like just makes the 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 fighter feel like a fighter, feel like this master martial class. And so I've very early on to my D and D years. I was like, you know what? I'm just embedding I'm homebrewing and embedding the maneuvers into the fighter class as a whole. And so when I was going through and making at least 2024 version of these classes, I was like, I'm doing it. I'm going to officially kind of embed it in. And here it is. So second level combat superiority. Uh, and just keep in mind though, it's a little bit adjusted, obviously from the battle master subclass. And, um, just it, it, it's adjusted to be able to fit all 20 levels of, or i guess from 2 to 20 in terms of what the fighter and how it progresses right and so you'll see that and actually the inspiration i got from that is going to be the actual star wars 5e version because the star wars 5e fighter class does have maneuvers built in um which i didn't know about i actually homebrewed it in before i ever played star wars 5e but uh, I kind of use that a little bit in terms of how to balance it and kind of progress it out. So combat superiority at second level, your experience on the battlefield has honed your fighting techniques. You learn maneuvers that are fueled by special dice called superiority dice. Maneuvers. You can learn you learn one maneuver of your choice from the maneuver options section. Many maneuvers enhance an attack in some way. You can use only one maneuver per attack. You learn additional maneuvers of your choice as you gain fighter levels outlined in the table below. Each time you learn new maneuvers, you can replace one maneuver you know with a different one. Superiority dice. You have two superiority dice, which are D4s, not, not D8s. A superiority die is expended when you use it. You regain all expended superiority dice when you finish a short or long rest. You gain additional superiority dice, and the size of your superiority die becomes greater as you gain fighter levels outlined in the table below. Saving throws. If a maneuver requires a saving throw, the DC equals 8 plus your proficiency bonus plus your strength or dex mods is going to be your choice. So here is my table here. Um... <laughs> A uh, little background to this. I actually typed it out and made a table on my iPad. And then, so I was like, I'm not going to retype that out. And so I screenshot it and embedded it in here. <laughs> it's a little janky, but it fits the bill. So, <coughs> so don't hate, don't hate too much, please. Uh, but yes, yeah, so level ones to 20 are outlined. Obviously level one, uh, you get not, you have no maneuvers known, but as you progress, right? So two, uh, you get, you know, one maneuver known, two superior dice, and the size, right? I won't go through all this. You can obviously see it for yourself. Feel free to pause the video to check it out. But essentially, as you level and progress through fighter, you gain more maneuvers uh, known. You gain uh, more superior die for your superior die uh, pool. And then your superior die, the strength of it grows. So you start at the D4, then you become a D6, D8, D10, all the way to D12. So just a good way for it to kind of just, you know, progress through the class because, um... You know, it, it is a little bit of a nerf to the original Battlemaster subclass because you don't get your D8s right off the rip. But you obviously, as you progress and you continue through the fighter class, it then builds out and becomes better actually in the long run. And so that's kind of, and that's the way I kind of balanced it a little bit as well and kind of made it, uh, you know, more fun to stick with fighter, stick with this class, you know, instead of this maybe, maybe multi-classing, maybe you like want to stick through so that way you can get better, um, better superiority die, um, and you know, have more maneuvers and have more of a pool for yourself. So, and this is just one of those things I've mentioned it multiple times. But this is one of those things where maneuvers baseline in the fighter gives the baseline a lot more agency and a lot more of a feel in terms of its core class. It's not getting its entire identity from a subclass. A subclass is just going to benefit it. It's going to build upon it, but and it's rooted at its core and now has this awesome feature to kind of make you feel like a, a, a you know. Um, just this, like, I guess, foe on the battlefield. And, uh, yeah. So, super glad uh, super glad that I finally kind of have it flushed out and I kind of have it embedded into the actual uh, PDF here. Because I just had it um, kind of just loosely in, in another file and we referenced it. But I'm glad that it's now in the lineup. So, level 3 fighter subclass. Not much to speak to this. Uh, obviously, you're going to get it at level 3. It's one of those classes that you get yours at that level so four is going to be your ability score improvement fifth level is going to be your extra attack you can attack twice instead of once whenever you take the attack action on your turn um same as 2014 same as unearth arcana however tactical shifts is a new thing that they introduced in the ua uh whenever you activate your second wind with a bonus action you can move up to half your speed without provo provoking opportunity attacks super cool 
So not only can you heal with a bonus action, but you can also move with a bonus action. And I think that just gives the fighter a lot more agency in terms of being able to kind of shift around the battlefield and make some cool moves and get themselves lined up for things in the future combat. Um, kind of, instead of having to burn a whole bonus action just to heal some hit points, you now get a little bit more with that, which is awesome. Uh, level 6 is going to be your ability score improvement, of course. Level 7 is going to be a subclass feature. Level 8 is going to be another ability score improvement. And that's another thing. Before we continue on, that's another reason why I added the maneuvers into the base class. Is because I wanted the fighter as just, you know, as a, as a class to be more customizable. Now, you, with your weapon masteries, you can customize kind of what you want to use, what kind of weapons you want to use, and the abilities that those give you. Now, with maneuvers, you can customize your maneuvers, what kind of play style you want to be, what kind of combatant you want to be out there on the battlefield. And so, and then, and then a big, uh, a big portion of this customization, too, is the ability score improvements. The fighter gets more ability score improvements than any other class. I believe that they get five, or is it six? I'm going to count real quick. One, two, three four five six seven they get seven i think a lot of other classes get five or six anyway regardless they get a lot of ability score improvements so that gets you that lets you take feats or to customize your stats and so i just love all these changes because it makes the fighter almost feel like this kind of blank canvas that you can then kind of mold and manipulate and build out how you want so kind of just a little bit to speak to the ability score improvements there now also at level eight know your enemy as a bonus action, you can discern certain strengths and weaknesses of a creature you can see within 30 feet of yourself. You know whether that creature has any damage immunities, resistances, or vulnerabilities. And if the creature has any, you know what they are. Once you use this feature, you can't do so again until you finish a short or long rest. You can also restore use of this feature by expending one superiority die, no action required. Know your enemy is something that I took from the, the Battlemaster subclass for the fighter. B big reason why I did that was because obviously the Battlemaster subclass for the fighter is now gone. The maneuvers are now embedded into the class as a whole, uh, as a core portion, and so there's no reason to ever take that subclass again. So uh, I wanted to, I kind of wanted to, I looked at the subclass to kind of see if there's anything else that I wanted to in in incorporate. And know your enemy is a super cool feature. I like know your enemy because it kind of it makes that marshal makes the marshal feel like it that they truly are a master on the battlefield. They can read their opponents. They can kind of discern certain things that maybe others would not. And they can, they can use that information to help the team uh, kind of overcome difficulties in these encounters. And so I love that. I just, I love that so much. And so I just threw that in here with it because it's just, it's just a super cool ability and it does just add another level to the, uh, to the identity of this class. And so that is also at level eight. Level 9, Indomitable. If you fail a saving throw, you can re-roll it with a bonus equal to your fighter level. If you do so, you must use the new roll, and you can't use this feature again until you finish a long rest. Indomitable, not much has changed. I did want to check real quick. Yes, so it, before, you re, you can re-roll a saving throw that you fail. Yeah, so Indomitable is actually much better. So before, it was you could re-roll it. Now, you re-roll it, and you gain a bonus equal to your fighter level. So at ninth level, you get a plus 9 to that saving throw. Incredibly good. Makes you much more versatile against those those spells and those traps and those effects that might be you know bogging you down. And so, incredibly good. That was actually a change made in the Unearthed Arcana. And so, super awesome. Um, cannot complain. Level 9 as well. Master of Armaments... Also added in the Unearthed Arcana, which I ported over. Master of Armaments, you are a master of weapons. Whenever you finish a long rest, you can choose any of the kinds of mastery weapons you're using and replace the mastery property of each with another mastery property. Property. The chosen kind of weapon must qualify for the new property. For example, you can replace the longsword sap property with the push property. It's a lot of properties being said. These property changes apply only for you, not others, and the changes end for you when you finish your next long rest. Going back to the customization thing, this is so awesome. This allows you now um, to be able to switch your 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 mastery property uh, that might be you know pre you know pre designated on a weapon to something else as long as it fits, fits the requirements. So that just allows you another layer to kind of make this martial fighter um, or sorry this martial character this fighter into kind of what you want it to be. And no other class obviously gets to do this. They all have to stick to the guidelines of the mastery properties. So that's so cool. I love it. Level 10 subclass feature. You gain a feature from your subclass. Yay. Two extra attacks. Your extra attack feature now confers two extra attacks rather than one. So now you can attack three times with the attack action. 
Uh, level 11, Know Your Enemy Improvement. You can now use your Know Your Enemy feature twice per short or long rest. So now you can kind of discern more creatures on the battlefield per short or long rest. Uh, 12th level, you gain the Ability Score Improvement. Uh, 13th level, Indomitable Improvement. So you get more use of your Indomitable. 13th level, Studied Attacks. Studied Attacks. You masterfully study your opponents and learn from each attack you make if you make an attack roll against a creature and miss you have advantage on your next attack roll against that creature before the end of your next turn that is going to be uh another arcana feature and also pretty awesome not like super crazy you know um uh, crazy in terms of just like not super crazy in terms of just a feature i'd say but it's helping that it's helping you hit more consistently which is awesome you know it feels bad when one of the primary roles as a fighter is to you know use your mini attacks and to smack the to, to smack down the enemy um so it sucks when you know one of those attacks you know one of your dps kind of um functions you know misses right with your extra attacks but now you have a better chance to hit on consec on your next consecutive attack so it's super cool just a it's not super, like, I'd say detailed, but a very good just baseline feature that, you know, lets you hit more consistently. Gets your DPS a little bit, up a little bit more. 14th level ability score improvement. 15th level is going to be a subclass feature. 15th level is going to be know your enemy improvement. You get to use more know your enemy. Um, you can use your know your enemy more times. 16th level is another ability score. 17th level action surge. You can now use your action surge twice. Incredibly good. Domital. You can now use your indomitable feature three times. 18th level subclass feature, 19th level another ability score improvement, and then 20th level master combatant. Uh, yes. So I've mentioned this in other videos, but I want capstone abilities to be awesome, to be something that players strive for, to make it feel like if you multi-class, you're missing something. And I say that with love because I want I not to say not to say multi-classing is bad. Full disclosure, I think multi-classing is awesome and you can make such cool builds when you do that. My issue is when multi-classing feels like the only option in terms of making an optimized uh, character or making a character that's powerful. That's another reason why I've done a lot of these revamps to the uh, to these D&D uh, core classes because I want all classes to feel powerful, to feel fun, and to make you almost, you know, almost just like push you in the direction of, hey, I want to stick with this class for 20 levels instead of feeling uh, you know obligated to multi-class and so this capstone feature is expands upon the original capstone uh in 2014 which is basically you can smack more than anyone else on your turn you then you uh you get the uh, ability to hit a creature four times on your attack action instead of three but i expanded that so master combatant 20th level also keep in mind the honor arcana it was just the uh it was still just the extra attack. So, Master Combatant. Years of combat and strategy have made you the ultimate combatant, vanquishing even the toughest of adversaries. You gain the following benefits. Extra attack. Your extra attack feature now confers three extra attacks rather than two. Superior insight. When you use your Know Your Enemy feature, you also learn the score of one stat from the following list. Strength, dexterity, or constitution. Legendary Maneuver. Your martial mastery and superior fighting sense allows you to push yourself beyond your bodily limits to perform a maneuver with heightened lethality. You can perform any maneuver from the maneuver options list and fuel it with a d20 instead of your normal size superiority die. This feature does not expend the use of your superiority die. Once you use this feature, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest. All right. Superior insight. I really like the idea that as a master combatant, you can read. Yeah, you have such a good read on creatures, and not only can you kind of discern their their vulnerabilities or maybe their resistances or maybe like you know their hardiness, but you also can just like calculate down to just one of their stats. Like you you can just kind of kind of zoom in, not zoom in really, but you know, you can kind of hone in and be like, okay, based on what I'm seeing, I can you know I can discern you know how good this specific stat is for this creature and i just think that's super cool i think it gave a lot of late game knowledge that'd be very beneficial to party members this is also something that no other no spell or uh feature does and so i think it's super unique and it'd be super cool to let the marshal have even more of an edge in the ability to kind of tell teammates and assist teammates in understanding you know the enemies that they're facing and then legendary maneuver uh oh uh homebrewed by the way superior insight legendary maneuver both homebrewed I love the idea of just like the this pinnacle of kind of a martial fighter just being able to just just 
pull out some crazy just martial attack or or I don't know just ability out of nowhere and just and just do something crazy uh, just randomly, right? It's almost like the kind of, uh, in my mind, it's kind of like, you know, the wizard casting some crazy spell what no one was prepared for. This is kind of the equivalent of like the more, the, the, the fighter just all of a sudden does something crazy and turns the tide of something, uh, just, just out of nowhere. And so I do want to kind of clarify a couple things. Uh, when I, when it says you can perform any maneuver from the maneuver options list, it, it's any of them. Like, known or unknown like prepared or not prepared like as a fighter with this with this feature you can go down the maneuver options and be like I'm, I'm doing this maneuver and i'm feeling it with a d20 um and so i just think that's super cool it just makes it so this like cool kind of key moment that the fighter can now do and a d20 you nowhere else in DD do you get to add a d20 to a roll other than obviously your skill checks and, and your and your tests right so I just think this is an awesome capstone that lets the fighter feel very unique and just kind of gives them some fun things that they can do and that they, that they can kind of just, you know, you know, have fun with. So that is the capstone 20th level fighter ability, master combatant. And then I added in the PDF, the maneuver options, obviously all the maneuver options. I found uh, them from Tasha's from the 2014 version, kind of any, any place that maneuvers were at, I added them all together. And so I'm just going to quickly scroll Actually, I'll go ahead and scroll a little slower so that if you want to pause and kind of read them all over, then you can feel free to do so. However, uh, this uh, this PDF will actually be in the link in the description. So there's really no need to pause, but you can just go and access it. So, but I will go ahead and just kind of continue to scroll through here. And there's quite a few. There's quite a few. Also, um, encompassed into this list too, is there are maneuvers that... that give you bonuses to that give you bonuses to roles uh for example quick uh quick example here let me go ahead and do that tactical assessment when you make a history investigation or insight check you can expend one superiority die and add that die to the ability check so that's just one example so you can you can essentially use your maneuvers to fuel ability checks and you know increase the chances of you passing these things there's a tactical assessment and then there's also I believe it is commanding presence, which you can uh, add a superior die to intimidation, performance, or persuasion checks. So, just super cool stuff there. And yeah, that's about it for the fighter. Fighter, I, I just love where it's at now. I love that it is now. It is now not only better with uh, with the maneuvers in combat, but it's also better with the maneuvers and the second wins with the tactical mind. It's just better overall, just in the not only the, the combat field, but also the role playing field. And it makes it feel like it's a more well rounded class. And it and it doesn't just it doesn't feel like RuneScape combat. It doesn't feel like you're just running up to a creature and going beat beat beat, you know, and then getting hit back. And it's just like whatever. It's you now it now feels like you can customize your your fighter how you want it, and then you can you can take those customizations and you can have agency in all manners of play. So, yeah. That is going to be all for the fighter. If you like what you saw, please feel free. I would appreciate any sort of uh, support, a like, subscribe, whatever you uh, you feel so inclined to give. But yeah, feel free to uh, take this uh, um, from the link in the description. Play test it, change it, do whatever you want. Um, but yeah, feel free to give feedback in the comments. And yeah, I'm 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 really excited for to to use this fighter going forward and to see how it kind of plays out. So. That's it for this video, and I guess there's nothing left to be said, but I'll see you all in the next one.